Hello guys, my name is Remik and in today's video we are going to talk about options pattern in .NET 8, so the best way of setting up the configuration in your web API. We're going to cover as well the differences between iOptions, iOptions Snapshot and iOptions Monitor that you can use and also the validation of those options. And if you're new to this channel, then please don't forget to hit the subscribe button, like button and about writing the comment. And now we are going straight into the video. Okay guys, so we will start with the basics. So the options pattern is the way of fetching the specific section from the configuration file. So in our case, the upsetting JSON. And we'll just have to create the specific class that will point to this section of our upsetting JSON. So let's say that we'll have the, the credentials. So the user, password and magic string. I don't know why it will be the magic string, uh, how it's like magic in that case, but uh, it doesn't matter. We'll just create the options a folder and also the, um, the options uh, class itself. So I'll create the new directory called options and also the credentials. options and we have to create the public const string that will be the same name of what we have in our upsetting json file so it will be the credentials config key and it will be the same name so credentials and as you remember it was the user password and also the magic string so the public string user string empty as the default it will be the public string password and also the our magic string Now we have to go to our program CS and configure the options there. So I will create the builder services and I will use the add options method and we have to point uh, on our credentials options class. So credentials options and we have to bind to that specific string so it will be the bind builder configuration get section and it will be the credentials options dot credentials config key. So as you remember, we have in upsetting JSON this credentials section. So it's like above the user password and magic string, and we have this defined over there and we are using it to define to which kind of the section we have to bind. So from the configuration, get the section of this specific name. Next thing to do is just to use the validate data annotations because in the later uh, phase of this video, we are going to add also the validation for it. So it will use the data, uh, data annotations that we have on our specific uh, properties in the credentials options class. And also we're gonna use the validate on start. So it will be the validation performed uh, as your, uh, your application is starting up. So if you have something wrong in that configuration, then it will not be passed, it will be actually failed and you'll have the uh, invalid options exception kind and then you will not proceed. So it's the very important thing if your application required to have some special data inside of the configuration file. All right, guys, I've created the my options controller. So it will use those free interfaces that we uh, talk about so it's the i options i options monitor and i options snapshot what are the differences between them 
Okay, so just to start up, you have to create the private read only field called credentials options. So not the I options from this, this class that we have created, but here you're, you're assigning only the options and uh, you are using this I options interface and you're taking the value. This is the same way as in the options snapshot only the options monitor is uh, is different that you're assigning the current value instead of the normal value. So the I options interface, this is the way of fetching the configuration only once at startup. So it will not change over time that uh, your application is running. So just imagine that it will be changed during your application lifetime, it will be changed to uh, one, two, two, three, four, and then your application will not see that change until it will be started up once again. So this is the I options. I options monitor is singleton way. So it will give the real value, the actual real value. This is the singleton class. If you change something in the upstream JSON, then you have this real value now. And the most recommended way of the using options pattern is to use the I options snapshot. So options snapshot is required if you have the scope service or the transient service, uh, then you can use iOption snapshot. So it will not change during the, mm, the lifetime of the request. So if someone will change the value uh, mm, in the configuration, mm, let's say before having the request and then during it will not be, it will not be reflected. So it will, um, it will keep the value until the request will end. All right, so now I've created three endpoints. It will take the I options interface, I options monitor, and also uh, I options snapshot. So it will string join with the comma separator those three uh, user password and magic string values. So we'll see how it goes. As you see, I have three endpoints, so I'll use the first one. So as you see, we have those three values there. So one, two, two, three, and I will show you that when you change in the upsetting JSON for the one, two, two, three, and five will add, I will save that. We are going back here to the endpoint, execute. As you see, nothing changed at all. So this is the only one time way of fetching the configuration. If we'll use the options monitor or the option snapshot, then you'll see that it will actually change. And now, as you see, this is with the five, will change with the six at the end. And also you'll see that it has the current value. So it will be the same as for the options monitor and options snapshot. All right, now we're gonna cover the validation of those options. So we'll go to the credentials options and we can assign some attributes on it. So we can use that it will be, for instance, the re required, it will have the mean length of the two and max length, for instance, as 50. And we'll check if actually it will be validated. So I will assign to the user the value of one, I will start up our app. As you see, the field user must be a string or array, a type with the minimum length of two. So it failed and our application didn't start. And we can also create our custom attribute, for instance, just to check if our magic string that we will have in our credentials options actually is the same uh, as we require. So I'll just create some simple attribute. And this will be called as is magic string valid attribute. And it will be the validation attribute. And we'll just assign some private const string of magic string and it will be like 888 all right protected 
override is valid method and this valid method this is the basic way of the validation in the validation attribute but we'll override it so it will be the var var magic string value to string and now if magic string will not be equal to our magic string then it will just return new validation result of magic string is not valid and otherwise it will just return the validation result success here and we'll use this in our magic string property so is magic string valid and as you see i'll just start up once again i'll assign this user to something else just to be higher with the length of two and the magic string is 777 so it will not proceed as well as you see we have the error that magic string is not valid and i will change this to the required value of 888 start this up and as you see everything went fine okay guys and at the end i will show you how our validation will work during the lifetime of the application so we'll just try it out we'll have the execute and yeah 888 so this is the valid uh, value of the magic string and we'll change this to let's say one and now we'll execute once again and boom as you see the magic string is not valid so our validation performed correctly okay guys so that's everything for today's tutorial i hope that you enjoy the way that it was described don't forget about hitting the subscribe button giving the like and also writing the comment i wish you a very nice day and see you in the next video